video is going to show you how to make a two block linoleum but carve them and register and have them on one block. It's going to talk about transferring the key image down here so that when you carve your color block you can align the carvings. And it's basically going to walk you through my two block print project and show you how I'm hand printing these prints. Yes, you're right. They're up here drying and you can see some of the proofs on the board behind me. One way to work on a relief print is to have this initial drawing, then take say another piece of tracing paper and align it on top of this and draw what you might think would be the color block for this. Notice that I have marks here that I've lined up so that I can put these two images together. So normally you would start with your key block or your darker block or the block that could be a standalone print if you're designing the color separation that way. And then you would add the color block. So it's normal that you'd start by designing and carving the first block and then move to carving the second block. Although in printing, normally you would print the color block, which is probably going to be in lighter value colors first, and then you'd print this second. I always start by making a drawing of my paper size. So I just drew that out. That way, once I got my image onto tracing paper, when I continued to change and add to this drawing, I could make sure that I was still fitting onto that three by eight piece of paper. Also, I was beginning to think about the layout as being on the same block. So what I decided to do here is that I transferred this drawing here and I start carving it and it's, it's all carved now and it's ready to be proofed. Also on my layout here, this is the three by eight inch, but I added an inch here. So I've actually got sections that are four inches. The reason I decided to do this is I'm going to print on four by eight paper and then trim it down to three by eight paper later. This will make for easier setting down of the paper. Notice that I have no border to this print that it's going to be floating on the piece of paper and I don't have a whole lot of room from where the edge of my paper is, which would be about here, and where my carving starts, which is very close in on the paper. By giving myself an extra inch, which means I can place the paper out here when I'm printing, it just makes it much easier for setting down the paper, not getting smearing, and it's very easy to just trim that inch off later. Okay, other advantages to this are that you don't lose your color block or misplace your color block sometime down the line. I've actually done that and had to spend a lot of time finding my two blocks that go together when uh, they got misplaced or, you know, they weren't together. When you have it all on one block, that won't happen. Also, for registration, you can adjust the registration easy on here and the registration and the image are all together on one unit. So again, I don't have to worry about having a separate registration sheet that goes with this project or a registration board or something made for this project. This will always be registered and be all together on one block. The only real disadvantage to this is that I'm using more material. And so the cost of the lino is a little bit more. But you know, linoleum is pretty cheap. So the cost is kind of negligible. It's not that big a deal. So again, just so that you could see, I have, this is where my color carving is gonna be. And then this is registration for the lower one and this is the registration for the upper one. One of the things that happens with relief prints or multi-block prints is I designed this and I transferred it, but when I carved it, I've changed it quite a bit from this drawing. I've added more little sections to it. I've decided to carve some things bigger or smaller. Um, it's not the same. This carving is now not the same as this. This color sketch was always very loose in the way it aligned with this, but now it's not even in alignment with this one at all because there's been so many changes. So I could put this over 
actually, yeah, there's been many changes. I could put this over my carving now and I could erase and make changes to this color drawing so that it would work correctly. But that could take a long time and I'm not gonna have an easy time having really tight registration where things that are carved a certain way on one line up really exactly with the other one. The faster and the easier thing to do is that I print this and then I offset it down here. So I have an exact copy of this transferred down here. So to do that, I'm gonna ink this up onto tracing paper and then I'm gonna immediately take that print and line it up over here and transfer it back down onto the block. So remember relief prints shift left to right, right? Mirror image when you print them. So if this was separate, separate blocks, say, and I carved this one first to transfer this image, I wouldn't just print it like this because then that would be backwards from this. I need a way to print it and then change that and move that same orientation onto the other surface. I could carve kento marks into the linoleum. In other words, making a carved area here and making a carved section here where my paper would fall right into that corner there and then align down there with that bar. And I might still do that, but in the meantime, while I'm transferring this image, I'm just gonna be using these two uh, marks. If I was gonna use the Kento, I should do that now before I transfer the image, because then I could ink out here and I could also transfer this corner piece, which would look like this. And then this piece here, I could transfer them down there and then I could be accurate. There's lots of ways to do this. I'm not going to have my registration be extremely tight, so if there's some um, movement, it's easy to adjust. What I mean by that is that when I transfer this, if I realize once I start proofing and printing the two of these together, that somehow when I transfer this, this should be more like this, say, it's really easy for me to just redraw this pencil line out here rather than adjust or recut a kento. So I, depending on the image, I, I like just having the marks on here. This part is one of the best parts of relief printmaking and I think all printmaking is that first time you put ink on the block and the first time you can really, really see the image. I wanna be careful that I'm not over inking because the image that I transfer, I don't want it to be smeared, that will defeat the purpose really of doing a transfer. I want to have those nice crisp edges so that I know exactly where those shapes begin and end in my carving. Oh, I have a squeaky brayer. That can be really annoying <laughs> for a long printing session. I'm going to have to get some. Um, actually, I find the easiest thing is Vaseline and just a little bit in there and it'll stop the squeaking without dripping all over everything like three in one might. Okay, I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and go right to my tracing paper. I'm going to make sure I really line this up to the marks that I made. Okay, and I have the tape there as a way to really ensure that it's going to stay exactly in that spot. I don't think I've ever actually done this transfer method by hand. That's exciting. I think I've always done it on a press. Okay. Lift it up. And then I'm immediately going to line it up down here. The reason you want to use tracing paper and not 
newsprint or not washi or printing paper is that tracing paper isn't absorbent. So the ink is just sitting on the surface of the tracing paper, it makes it easy to transfer. Okay, so now I have this image down here in this rectangle aligned in the same exact spot. So the next thing I want to do is I want to talc this and that will help stabilize the ink and help it start to dry. If you don't have French chalk talc, which is a printmaking material, you could use, really, you could probably use anything. You could use flour, you could use cornstarch, uh, cornmeal. <laughs> you kind of could use any sort of powder especially because on the linoleum, you can just wash it right off after you're done. Whatever the powder is, I mean. I'm being really gentle with doing this, but this ink is now stabilized on there. I can put my hand on here and not get ink on me. And so now I can move forward with, of course, cleaning this, <laughs> but I could just draw directly on this with a pencil to figure out where I want to have my color block shape just going. So this ink is going to stay on here until I'm finished carving. And then before I print from it, I'm going to clean that off with some simple green or dish liquid that I scrub. This Caligo ink is permanent once it's dry, but not if I hit this with simple green or even paint thinner. Uh, I don't think that's necessary, but simple green, I can get it off of there. And it might just have a stain, but it's not gonna interfere with my printing. Okay, so that's the first main part is how do you transfer this and get it registered into the other place on your block? There's another consideration at this step. I can see that there's some things I still want to carve or I might want to carve, thinking about making these hands um, show a little bit more, maybe carving through the center of them. If you had a lot of changes to make and you think it was gonna affect how you're gonna align these two images, you might want to proof and then do the carving and then wait until you transfer the image. But I'm going to make really small sort of changes on the block, so I'm not concerned about that. You can also save this print that you made on the tracing paper. Tracing paper is not absorbent. It's going to take quite a while, a week maybe or more, for it to dry. So talcing it also speeds up that process. Another good reason to hold on to this is what if I decide I want a third block? I have this that has my registration marks on it, so I could add a third, fourth, whatever block to it, and I still have my key image on here. This is what I would normally do for cleaning a linoleum block. I wouldn't take it to the sink because of the burlap on the other side, and I don't want that getting wet. What if you transferred this and it's smeared or it's too light to really see or it's just wrong or you put it, hit it in the wrong spot, really wrong and, or spaced out and didn't align it. No problem, you just clean that off, dry the linoleum again and transfer it again. I'm about half an hour, 45 minutes into carving here and you can see I've already drawn quite a bit on here and committed to some of these major shapes. I've also gone in, carved here, carved some other spaces. As I'm working here, I realize, oh, I should change up here. And so I'm kind of going back and forth with that. Once I committed, especially to these shapes in here, the rest sort of fell together. Also, I had already been thinking about this since way back from when I drew this. So it's actually what I'm doing on here is very similar. I'm just responding more precisely to the marks that are up here.
I finished the carving for the color run and I didn't have any of the Caligo ink rub off on my hands as I was carving, which is really great. I'm curious to see how well it will come off. Since I was just printing this earlier today, this ink hasn't been on the block for very long. So I'm hoping it'll come right off and it looks like it is. That's great, there's a little stain. So at this point, I'm ready to start proofing, and I assume, at least I always go into it with this assumption that there'll be some further adjustments to make, that once I actually print them uh, together and see how they line up, I might need to go back and clean up some stuff. Or, because I haven't printed this before, there might be things that I just need to touch up and carve a little bit better, you know, straight straighten out curves, curve up curves, some little corners or something that aren't carved as well as they should be. Now that the ink is off, you can see that my color carving is much simpler than my key block carving. This is a very flat kind of design, so it isn't showing you how you might approach color separation on a face or a more realistic kind of piece, but this shows Basically, once we get it printed, it's going to show the choices that I made in terms of how they're going to overlap and not overlap and all that fun stuff. So printing is next. When I'm color proofing a two block print like this, I like to use complementary colors. So I'm going to be using the light orange of the Cranfield ink, Safe Wash ink, and I'm going to be using the ocean blue of the aqua wash ink. It's just the ones I happen to grab. I also like to make them a little bit more transparent, so I'm going to put out some of this extender, which is just ink that has no pigment in it, no color in it. The reason I'm doing this is I really want to see color mixing when I overprint, and for a test print, this helps me really see where they hit. If I was going to proof with red and blacks, the black would completely cover up the red, and so I wouldn't see where they're overlapping. I would just see any spaces in between them, say, where I didn't have any trapping. And I'm going to be printing these wet and wet, wet on wet, which means printing one right after the other color, which isn't probably how I'm going to do my addition printing. I'm probably going to print, say, all of the color and then come back the next day and print all of the blue or whatever color I do, the key block. So you notice with this that this is quite light and it isn't going to function like a typical key block. I'm actually going to make it a little bit darker. So I'm adding just another, what I joke and say, it's a leg of a flea. For years I used to say, a teeny weeny bit. And then it dawned on me that my teeny weeny bit might be somebody else's extremely large bit. So I use uh, parts of insects now as a way to describe that. So flea size or even a leg of a flea or the leg of the baby flea, you know, teeny weeny bit. Okay, that's still pretty light. <laughs> I'm not doing drawdowns which is taking some of this and drawing it down on a piece of paper, which would have been a good idea, uh, but I'm just gonna keep adding more and roll that. Okay, this is fine. We're gonna go with this. I'm gonna print these in a traditional order. So I'm gonna start with the orange. This color proofing is really important before I launch into my good paper or my final good paper, because I need to make sure things are lining up the way I want them to. And I'm also gonna be double checking my measurements and my reg marks out here, that they are also in the right place and giving me good alignment. So with washi Japanese paper, printing on the smooth side. And I didn't end up putting reg marks, I'm just gonna line up to the corner and then along this line and see whether that'll give me the kind of accuracy or whether I need to add T-bar marks.
I can see that this edge right here is pretty close. It's still beyond my uh, image area, but it's sort of annoying when I'm trying to burnish. So I'll probably carve that back a little bit further just to make printing easier. Leaving time for color proofing is really important. The reason I wouldn't normally print wet on wet is really efficiency. That if, if I was printing the addition, I want to be able to just concentrate on one image and one block that I'm printing rather than go back and forth. What's going to happen because this ink is still wet is some of it's going to merge back onto this block as I print and that will tend to muddy the blue and make it brownish. I don't want that. I want a really crisp difference in the colors. So waiting at least overnight until this ink has a chance to dry and be absorbed by the paper will give me much crisper printing of the colors. If you look at the ink, the roll up when I transferred it, and then you look at the state of the block now, you can see the changes I made. A lot more things have been, were solid here and I've carved them away on here. So this overall has a lighter feel to it. It's nice having a whole set so that if I wanna go in and carve on one of these blocks more, I can look at this, I can look at that, I can see how the balance is with this one alone, how the balance is on this one alone, then how they work together. I find that really helps. 